Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist here in the Seattle area. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel, having a great time this 2024. Really excited for this upcoming year. I'm gonna really try to post a lot of videos and be, you know, have a nice cadence and really try to get videos out once a week. Let's try this out because I have so much that I wanna to talk to you guys about. I love the engagement here, so thank you guys for watching the videos. I really do appreciate it. As you can see, I'm here in my office. I do my videos after clinic and there's a lot of charting. I see a lot of patients here in clinic. I see medical, surgical, and cosmetic dermatology patients and it's really nice to balance for almost four years now with the channel and seeing patients, doing my charting at the end of the day, but also making time to chat with you all here on the, the YouTube channel. So thank you guys, I really do appreciate it. I'm having a great time still. April will make four years and such a blast. So 2023 is over, but I wanna talk about the top three skincare mistakes I saw in the last year. And one is actually pretty new. I didn't think I'd have to talk about pimple patches, but it did have some kind of crazy surge in popularity during, I'd say right around the time of the COVID era, the pandemic, where we had a lot of at-home skincare and we were trying to figure out how to maintain our skin when dermatology offices were closed down the street. And so pimple patches, pimple patches, it would be number one mistake would be overuse of pimple patches and using pimple patches while you're on while on the medication Accutane. So I'll talk about that very soon, but let's talk about overusing pimple patches. Pimple patches, different brand. I've used Cosrx's, I've used Zitstica. You know, there's quite a few brands out there. The Mighty Patch, you know, that one I think is my wife's favorite. Neutrogena came out with a new acne line and they have pimple patches as well, as well that are nice. They come in different sizes. I've seen some of the videos with the huge hydrocolloid sheets that you put on your face, which I think is crazy. If you're needing a sheet, then you definitely need to see a dermatologist. Pimple patches do come in different sizes and shapes. They have like stars, they have the uh, circles. That's the most popular one with the bigger circle and very small dot sizes. So pimple patches, I have no problems with it. The technology is fine. Hydrocolloid patches, they really do draw out the impurities, maybe some purulence. It doesn't control your acne. It will just help treat the particular area or protect it. I say it's more for protection because some people, actually I'll say a lot of my patients like to pick at their acne and that's called acne excoriae. Now when you are a picker and you like to pick at any irregularities in the face, especially if you're having a raised acneiform lesion on your cheek, people will pick it to the point where it will get scarred. And scarring, as we've talked about on the channel, is permanent. Permanent acne scarring, we want to avoid at all costs. And so I like the pimple patches to protect your face, protect the acne in your face from you picking at it. Or if you wear a mask at work, you know, I do surgeries and I'm wearing a mask all the time, you know, the pimple patches are nice so that your mask isn't rubbing on that acne lesion. Now people are on CPAP machines, they're helmet sports that some patients are into, like say football, baseball, the pimple patches may help in protecting the acne in those areas. If you're using more than two to three patches in a day, I think it's time to see the dermatologist because you need to get your acne under control so we don't get into that permanent acne scarring issue. In terms of you know trauma to the skin, I usually say it's not usually a problem with it causing issues with like breaking your blood vessels, causing scarring, the pimple patch itself, unless you're on the medication isotretinoin or Accutane. That medication is reserved for people with moderate to severe acne, especially moderate acne where that's not responding to our other treatments. We have a treatment ladder and once we get to the top rung on the ladder, which is Accutane, that's when the patient really needs it and a lot of times they have cystic acne that's really deep, really painful, hot to the touch, really tender, and it's scarring. You know, it could get be body, face, face and body. And so this is a vitamin A derived medication that is a medication that we have to monitor the patient once a month. But your healing capabilities while on the medication is not at its prime. You're gonna notice when you cut yourself, say, I got some cuts here from working around the house, it could take a long time to heal. We say don't, uh, get any elective procedures six to nine months after your last pill of Accutane because your healing capabilities are temporarily altered and not at its prime like we said. So pimple patches, I've seen people put pimple patches on while they're on Accutane and when they peel off the pimple patch, ooh, it really can peel off the good skin with it. And so your fragile skin 
while on Accutane. It's a real thing. You gotta moisturize like crazy. But don't use a pimple patch as well on it because I've seen people almost scar their face. And when I see them in follow-up, yes, the blemishes are improving with time, but you don't even want that blemish to begin with with that pimple patch. So trust the medication, follow your dermatologist's instructions. Tell them that you're on pimple patches and ask, hey, is this okay that I do it? Because I'm seeing this new phenomenon where people are not doing well with a pimple patch while on Accutane. So that's for problem number one. Problem number two or mistake number two I am seeing would be with your retinol or prescription retinoid. So prescription being I prescribe tretinoin 0.025.05% or 0.1% to xeratine, which I feel is, has more of a punch and can cause more dryness and irritation than tretinoin. Or there's the other stuff like, you know, triferritine, which is a newer uh, retinoid or the other one is adapalene 0.3%. You can find adapalene as different over the counter at 0.1%. That's another retinoid. And then retinol. They're all under the umbrella of retinoids. So retinoid, there's that umbrella term. Then there's over the counter retinoids like retinol, retinol, retinaldehyde, and adapalene 0.1% in the US. We can get that over the counter. Before I, to, I you had to prescribe the, the uh, adapalene at that dose. And then there's prescriptions like I'd mentioned. So I'm seeing people give up way too early on their retinoid. And they're also seeing a lot of irritation from the retinoid and that's turning them off and making them quit sooner. So one, I have always had to talk about, are we using it appropriately? And two, are we laying out expectations appropriately as well? Because people don't realize that it can take months, 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 several months to get the results that we are trying to strive for. Retinoids can help with fine lines and wrinkles by increasing collagen can increase cell turnover and help with dark spots and hyperpigmentation, which we talked about on the channel, especially for my patients who are skin of color, who deal with hyperpigmentation, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, retinoids can help, as long as we're not irritating the skin. If you irritate the skin and cause redness, that can leave a brown spot. So we gotta be real careful with that. And then three, it can help with acne and it can help keep your pores clean, especially adapalene and tretinoin and tazeratine. Retinol, so so they all bind to different receptors and so i say adapalene is good for acne for uh, anti-aging i need to see more studies on it i'm not convinced it's really good for anti-aging now for tretinoin to xeratine we know it works well for anti-aging and for acne that's for sure now people who aren't using it correctly i have a lot of patients who aren't using it correctly they're using way too much so we always say pea size amount which a lot of people online say no i don't believe you that's not enough for my entire face Really, you need the, the thinnest film on your face, and I would put a pea size amount on the hand. Let me show you real quick. I'm gonna use a little sample of Aquaphor here. Pretend this is a retinoid. I, I put my retinoid on at bedtime, so it's daytime right now. A lot of times, sunlight will deactivate your retinoid, so I use it at bedtime. This is all you need here. Just a pea size amount, okay? Then you break it up into two dots on the face. Always, you know, the nose, you don't want to forget the nose. You can go around the mouth, do that at the end. But I start up here, do the nose, cheekbones, and you connect the dots. And that's all you need for your retinoid. So a lot of times people are using too much. You, if you wanna treat your neck, you can go ahead, but maybe half a pea because it's a sensitive skin. And then after that, you moisturize. I wouldn't go ahead and slug over your retinoid because that will really be too occlusive and push the medicine in, causing more irritation. So I use like a moisturizing cream, whether it's Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream, CeraVe PM Lotion, Vanna Cream is great. Cetaphil also nice. And La Roche-Posay Tolarian um, Moisturizer is great. You wanna apply your pea size amount to dry skin, not damp, because damp skin will absorb the medication more readily and cause irritation and moisturizing afterwards. Now there's a thing called the retinol sandwich where you can apply your moisturizer and then apply your pea size amount of retinoid and then follow up another layer of moisturizer. That's the retinol sandwich. If you're starting off and you have sensitive skin and you're worried you're gonna get irritation from your retinol, you can totally do that method. In terms of doing it correctly, that's where you know people start too fast. They start off right out the gates you know, every night. You wanna go maybe two to three times the first couple of weeks and then increase to nightly as tolerated. Some people can only tolerate the retinoid two to three times a week indefinitely, and that's okay. A little is better than none. So trying to find the right frequency where you won't get irritation is key. Let's talk about expectations. It can take two to three months of using a retinoid consistently to see improvement in acne. 
four to six months to see improvement in hyperpigmentation and also six months plus to see improvement in fine lines and wrinkles. So you really gotta stay with this. It. more of a marathon approach when it comes to retinoids. But once you're on it, and you, you should stay with it, if, as long as you're not pregnant, you should stay with it. And I've been on you know, a retinoid for over 10 years, which is the best decision I've made, besides wearing sunscreen consistently. So I'd say sunscreen during the day, retinoid at night is the way to go. And knowing when to see the improvement is important because I saw a lot of patients who gave up because they're like, oh, I did it for a couple weeks and I didn't see any improvement in my acne or my dark spots. So stay with it, please. And a lot of times you have to work with your dermatologist to really optimize your regimen, whether it's for melasma, acne, you have to work with your dermatologist to see if there are other supplemental adjuvant therapies to combine with your retinoid to get the results because by itself, it may not be enough. Number three is using too many skincare products. Now, I just have to say, maybe I was responsible for people buying a lot of products because we have a lot of fun here and we talk a lot about products and it can be hard to navigate like, oh, I want that, that sounds great, I want that. So I always say, have a skincare goal in mind, whether it's anti-aging, acne, hyperpigmentation, and then know your skin type, whether it's dry, oily, combination, sensitive. After you wash your face, you know, wait 30 minutes and see if your face is it dry, oily, or the T-zone is only oily part of your face and you have dry cheeks. That's what I have, it's combination skin. So you have to tailor your skincare routine to your goals, but also choosing your products wisely based on your skin type. And so I have combination skin, so I like gel cleansers, I like foaming cleansers, so I can be acne prone, especially in the T-zone. And then dry skin too, so a good moisturizing cream or lotion for my face, I'll alternate. You know, I'll do lotion for summer, I'll do cream in the wintertime. So summer, you want something more lightweight. Winter when you're very dry, especially on your cheeks my cheekbones get really dry and irritated, I'll use a cream or I'll even use Aquaphor at the cheekbones before going to sleep or Cicaplast Balm by La Roche-Posay. So you gotta know your skin type. Also don't, don't go crazy. I've been having a lot of patients bring a, a huge bag of stuff that they bought at Sephora recently. You can have a lot of fun at Target or Amazon. Just uh, you go down a rabbit hole and buy a bunch of stuff. Skincare is fun, but we can overdo it. I've seen a lot of patients get really bad irritant or allergic contact dermatitis to their skincare products because they're using too much and to the point where I've been seeing people with rosacea get a flare of their rosacea or even get a new subset of rosacea called perioral dermatitis where you get these red bumps around your mouth and I usually see that in women in their mid 20s to 40s and it's very common and it can get exacerbated by topical steroids but definitely if you're using too many skincare products, particularly leave-on exfoliants, you like that new glycolic acid um, exfoliant, that toner with all the AHAs, I feel like people are getting irritation and even perioral dermatitis from using too many exfoliants. Exfoliants are fine, you can do that two to three times a week max, but not every day. And a lot of my patients are like, ooh, I was doing multiple toners like every day or different exfoliants that you leave on with a pad and you wipe it on, you leave it on. That's different from a cleanser, right? Like I always talk about, I like acne cleansers with salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide. Like those are fine to do on a daily to every other day basis, but the leave on exfoliants with lactic acid, glycolic acid, those are even like say, Paula's Choice BHA solution is nice, but doing that multiple times a week can be like playing with fire. So I've been seeing a lot of those rashes in clinic where people were just overdoing it and they have like this really well demarcated red line on their face and just their face is swollen, eyelids are swollen, neck is all red. You know, you really wanna be careful. And so I have patients say, oh, it's fine if I use multiple products. It's natural, it's all natural. Now, dermatologists do not like that term all natural because poison ivy is all natural. And so finding a skincare product with a lot of botanical ingredients, it can cause a bad rash. Uh, so just keep that in mind, okay? It was great talking about the top three skincare mistakes I saw in the last year. Hope this video is helpful. We're gonna make the same mistakes going forward no matter what year it is, right? Because retinol, we all are using retinols more readily, but we have to know how to use it correctly. And we have to also pump the brakes on purchasing too many skincare products. The 10 step routine is fun, but a lot of people don't need that, right? You gotta keep it simple. So I hope this video was helpful. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share with your friends who are into skincare. And I'll see you guys for the next video. Thanks guys, peace.